can sing. I must tell Jesus. Three, three, four.
think we're supposed to get some rain again tomorrow, but that's all right. I think we could use a little bit more rain, uh, at least on the garden, so that's good. But if you want to take out your prayer sheet, I have a few updates I want to let you know about. Some surgeries coming up and uh, things like that, and then we will get some updates from you all here on the prayer list. Uh, three surgeries that I know of, of course we have Rogers tomorrow, uh, it's going to be at 5.30, they may actually, that's when he has to be there, so they'll probably get started probably 6.37, I'm not sure, but it's supposed to take about nine hours, so be in prayer for him if you would. And then uh, coming up on Monday, I mentioned this on Sunday, uh, Don Everett is going to have surgery in his eye, and I'm sure he'd appreciate our prayers. Also coming up at the end of July, uh, July 31st, Robbie Campbell is going to have uh, surgery on his prostate, and uh, he asked that we would pray for him. So uh, those are the three that I know of off the top of my head. But let's go through here. Let's go through the names uh, on the prayer list. Uh, sometimes it's been a while since I've read through the names, but I'd like to get through these names, and if you know, maybe the Lord will bring something across your mind, and you know about some of these individuals, we can get an update on them. And uh, maybe some we can remove as well. But we have Janet Akers, Larry Aldis, Arnold and Andrea Amos, Dwayne Archie, Loretta Austin, Dreama Bailey, Amy Baker, Deborah Beasley, Amy Becker, QB Belcher, Nancy Belcher, Christopher Bennett, Elaine Blackwell, Alvin Carroll Blankenship, Melissa Bogus, Steve Booth, David Bowers, Greg Bowers, Danny Bradley, Jean Bradley, Mary Bradley. Patsy Broadus, Bob Brown, David Brown, Cindy Broyles, Noah Broyles, Jan Bryan, Betty Burton, Billy Burton, Debbie Cable, Greg Kales, Robbie Campbell, Christine Cardinal, Ronald Carroll, Howard Carter, Michael Carter, Randolph and Liz Carter, Sandra Castillo, Judy Cecil, David Clark, Larry Cobb, Carolyn Cody, Sheila Collins, April C. Acomer, Madeline Craig, Teresa Craig, Debbie Dalton, Dill Dalton, Carolyn Davis, Phyllis Deacon, Jaden Dillon, Tina Dillon, Kathy Dixon, Dottie Duncan, Gail Spicer Duncan, Robert Dunn, Dottie Egger, Don Everett, Bill and Nancy Ferguson, Freddie Ferguson, Gary Fields, Teresa Fisher, Harvey Flint, Dorothy Flora, Dolores French, Cassie Gillenwater, Donnie Gillenwater, uh, Norman and Becky Godsey, Bonnie Gonneau, <coughs> Dorothy Hambrick, Amy Hammond, Chuck Harden, Susan Harden, Andy Hare, Patty Parker, Matt Harrison, Greg Hatfield, Amanda Hill, <coughs> Judy Hines, Michael Maxine Holdren, Deborah Hollinsworth, Jerry Hollinsworth, Sydney Hunt, Becky Hunter, Vaughn Hutchinson, Dreama Ison, Rachel Jeffcoat, Stephanie Jennings, Cooper Jewell, Kelly Johnson, Brandon Jones, Lee Kaufman, Gene Keene, Jim Kelly, Dave Allen Kennedy. Now, if you see names on there with an S after it, uh, those mean salvation. They may also have a physical need while they're on there. And then uh, we also on our cards up here, uh, we have a lot of folks after the service, you know, for the invitation, they come up and they'll pick a couple of these cards and pray for these names. These are people that we believe also need to be saved. Uh, so there's a lot of individuals there. Uh, and, of course, if you know of any individuals, we can add their names to this card as well. But let's go here to the next page. Johnny Kerwin, Sheree King, Nancy Klein, Sue Kozlowski, Anita Lambert, David Lambert, Marietta Lambert, Rhonda Lambert. Daryl Barber Lee, Daniel Lester, Wade Freed Lester, uh, Wade Lester Jr., Rita Lewis, Eddie and Honey Long, Linda Long, Pam Long, Danny Lucas, Kathy Lucas, Mike Lucas, Bobby Martin, Trixie Martin, Jacob Tara Matney, Judy McClanahan, Bob McCullough, Mary McGuire, Greg Meadows, <coughs> Leonard Miller, Nolan Miller, Faith Mills, Zoe Mitchum, Shirley Mole, DJ Mullins, Penny Mullins, George Muncie, Eric Mutter, Ben Neal, Cindy Offenberger, Diane Partlow, Riley Patterson, Margie Pence, Roger Pence, Deborah Pepe, Trish Phelps, J. 
Josh Kelsey Phillips, Sonia Fohn, Naomi Pilkington, Angela Ramsey, Gabe Reese, Richard Raines, Don Richards, Lorraine Richards, Judy Richardson, Amy Rickman, Linda Robertson, uh, Benny and Darla Robinson. I did have a question there I need to ask. Uh, Joyce Rogers, Jake Rupp, Dale Scott, Eddie Simonis, uh, Joanna Sexton, Monica Schaefer, Sarah Shires, Brenda Shortridge, Jeanette Seibert, Randall Smith, Sharon Smith, Frida Smoot, Jennifer Snowden, Betty Snyder, Martha Snyder, uh, Brenda Sowers, Ellie Spencer, Jesse Spencer. Jesse had a praise today, I understand. Yeah. And uh, that's great. You want to tell them what it was? Because I don't remember about all the details. Uh, just the, the, a trial was approved by the FDA and it's specific for the tumor that I had because they, they don't know whether it's going to come back or not. So, <coughs> so if it ever did come back, That's great, but it'd be nice for it not to come back too. So yeah. that's even better. <clears throat> and we have Tom Spencer, Kathy Sproles, Julia Stoniker, Mark Stoniker, uh, Jack Sullivan, John Sullivan, Mike Tabor, Beverly Taylor, Eddie Thomas, Cindy Thompson, uh, Chris Tincher, David Waddell, Bill Walters, John White, Mike White, Tabitha Witt, Sean Wilburn, Connie Williams. Eunice Williams, Larry Williams, Sue Williams, Christy Opp, and Judy Young. And I think last week, uh, Nora Sue, did you mention your brother, Bill? Um, yeah, Bill is back. Yeah. Okay. He's I, yeah, totally did he need put on the list? Because I didn't know if it was an addition or if it was just yeah. for that night. <clears throat> um, he seems to be doing okay. Okay. Uh, just remembering the prayers. Okay. Yeah, I just wasn't sure. Right, I understand. We all need prayer. Okay. And I just want to ask Noel, uh, Linda's dad, that's Don Richards, correct? Um, did he get saved? It uh, seems like I remember that Dave Spencer or somebody. Well, no, he's been taking communion, though. Okay, so he's been talking, at least he's been coming to the services that day, which is good. So that's as far as been saved, about that. Okay, so we'll keep praying for his salvation. And yeah, you know, that's the one thing it doesn't hurt if you it's like some of these people we've been praying for, they may already be saved, but uh, it's better to assume they're not right. and pray that they get saved and, and be wrong about that than just assume they are saved and then quit praying. So uh, so we'll keep praying there for him about that. Uh, any updates, changes, or deletions here to pray? Just Patty. You can remove Brita Snoot. She's doing very well. Thank you. So Brita Snoot. Fifth column to remove her. Yes, Brenda. Um, Josh and Nancy Taylor. They had the baby. He made it too rapidly, so they got the holding like they wanted to. And now he has it. He's in heaven. Yeah. That's terrible. I'll keep praying for them. And that's the one comfort that we have when little ones you are know, taken like that. We know that you know, we know where they're at. They're with the Lord. So we praise the Lord for that. Trina, did you <coughs> Amy, what was the last name? Rickman. Okay. So the fifth call can also be Amy Rickman. Okay. Yes, Jeff. Or um, you can move, remove Chris Tincher. And then also you can remove um, Gabe and Dylan. Her, she's had a transplant. Everything's going well. Okay, so Chris Tencher in the last column. Yeah, and Jaden Dillon. Jaden Dillon. And she had the transplant in the better grade. Yes, he can be. Okay, <coughs> any others? Chris um, Ben and Kathy's in New Mexico with a tent meeting, and Dan said that they had a 16 year old boy to get saved. Oh, great. After the tent meeting. So. Okay. I, I believe he's still dealing with Sonny Fain. Mm -hmm. Get it nailed down. That's great. Yeah. Well, that'll be good. More soup, you have Yeah, she could remove Phyllis Deacon. She had all her treatments. She had cancer. She's Remember Nancy.
Nancy Ferguson there in the third column. <coughs> I'm sorry. She says she's three. Oh, uh, she's three. <laughs> Bill Waters, he was the one that was waiting on a liver transplant, and I told you that he had the donor. They were just trying to get him back well. The donor, he lost the donor because they kept him, and he found out that his liver was not large enough to be a donor. Mm -hmm. So he definitely continued to fight for Bill Waters. He's losing weight. That's a prank. Bill Waters there in the last call. <coughs> Any others? Updates, changes? Yes? No. Uh, Elaine Blackwell, the first call you know that, one of my EMS support group members, mm -hmm. she had her knee replaced. And, uh, she, she's doing okay. Take her away. Okay. And the Dolores French there in the third call, and I think it's okay to do a Okay, can we move Dolores French and Elaine Blackwell? All right, any others? You can uh, remove the Wayne Archie. Dwayne Archie can also take him off. It's great. It's, it's good to remove names for the right reasons. So. All right, anybody else? One more thing. Sharon's not doing good. She just all right. She's eating her up. No, no necessarily need to put her on, but she suffers an awful lot. It's a prayer for Sharon Mullins for arthritis. <clears throat> and last Friday, they, uh, Dr. gave her two choices on her shoulder injection or total replacement. She told him she's too old. It takes about six months to recoup from shoulder surgery. But she's about half metal now anyway. She's got to have a lot well, of... I, I, I ain't got time to count all the operations she's had. I couldn't imagine going through another one. The price of sharing people for her arthritis. Anybody else? <coughs> all right well, let's go to the lord in prayer and let's do this uh before we do that how many unspoken requests do we have for tonight all right many of those and uh let's do this let's try to split the prayer list up a little bit and that way we can try to concentrate on some some names don't forget about our missionaries and other ministries on the back <clears throat> but how many will try to concentrate on the names on the first page those first three columns okay thank you how many will try to concentrate on the unspoken requests and the names in the last page there. Thank you. And how about our missionaries and other ministries? Okay, thank you very much. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. And I'm going to ask Doug if he'd mind praying. This is for the ones the Lord puts on your heart. And as he prays out loud, you pray silently there where you're at. And uh, that way we can try to cover as many of these names as possible and uh, see some great things that God's going to do. Father, we come. Tonight, we gave your hearts ready. Come, Lord, bring your names before you that we know are serious condition. We thank the rock. <clears throat> Lord, it's a big thing that he's going to go through and it'll be life changing. But Lord, we know that he's in your hands. He's told us many, many times. Whichever way it goes, he's ready, he's in Oh, you know, Lord, even though he says he's able, okay, he's still very, he's still human, he still has feelings. Lord, we know that he would rather be here a while longer than talk to the little one. Lord, many things have changed since that baby was born. Lord, we know that, again, you're in control. We thank it all here. And Lord, so many others. I just went blank for the order of the names, but you know it is, what the situation is all. We ask God that this prayer ain't not here at this church, many other churches, and just ask God that as a church family now, we all come together. Her hearts will be in tune, Lord, with you, and would have a desire, Lord, to bring each one and so up to you, and Lord, just give them to you. We don't want to give them to you and then bring them back. We want to leave with you, Lord. God for the land. We ask God that you bless them be tonight. Lord, we thank you for this church family. Lord, I truly love this bunch. Lord, I know that you love them a lot more than we do right now. Lord, you get your son for the unknown. 
and Lord, their life that most everybody fears the light of faith. And Lord, they're calling on you right now. Grace, mercy, help, and strength. And God, we just pray that you bless the preacher tonight. They stand before us here a little bit and proclaim your word. We ask now, Lord, that you would pray that you would bow our hearts. You help us to put the days worries and today's things out of our minds. Lord, just concentrate on what you have for us. And Lord, you might feed us. You might strengthen us. When we leave tonight, Lord, we'll be better equipped and go us on the coming. And pray, God, for those that's filled with the children, teaching them, the nursery workers, and all that got their hands full of them. Lord, we bring it all before you give it to them. Lord, our church is growing. Lord, we just know that the devil is fighting. He don't want the church just to increase. He wants us to go down. Lord, we thank you for the many, many children that did this church. Many churches cannot say, Lord, that they have youth amongst them at the midst. And Lord, so many churches are going out closing their doors because they're not out encouraging small ones, young ones to come in. Lord, we just know, Lord, that it's not your will. We don't want any church to overcome it. We just want the church to expect it. Bring in more to expect it out. <clears throat> Father, we lack the time. We learn too much to you now, Lord. You know what our hearts are and what, where we belong according to you. We thank you, God, for this thing called salvation. Thank you, Lord, that you love us and us. That you, you paid the ultimate price. Gave your all that we might have it all. And God, all we had to do was accept it. You didn't charge us. But in a way, I guess now that we are saved, Lord, we owe you a whole lot. And we need to do our best to serve you, work for you, and tell others about you. Help us start as we're out and about. We might give a cry. We might say, God bless you and have a good day. Lord, it's many, many people. Even though we can't really see it on them, know, Lord, exactly what they're going through, they're suffering. The, the world is leading them in the wrong way. Slow but sure, the devil is working and he's taking people to a place called hell. Help us as Christians, God, to remember that you saved us and we're not going to that place. Do our best to persuade others, Lord, to change, to turn before we go. Forgive us, Lord, our shortcomings, our sins. We thank you, Lord, that you're putting feet on the floor this morning. And Lord, we thank you. We're grateful for everything you do for us children. We ask you to pray it now in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Appreciate that, Doug. <clears throat> well, just a few announcements here to let you know about. Uh, be praying for the teenagers as they are at camp this week. Uh, and we were able to take them up there Monday, and I tell you what, beautiful, beautiful campgrounds. I cannot believe uh, how much I took the boys there. My boys, it's probably been seven, eight years ago, they had a men's, uh, men and boys fellowship type thing, and uh, they had two cabins, I think two cabins on one side and one on the other, and then, of course, the house for the guests to stay in, uh, and most of the people stayed in tents. Um, now it's like, Five cabins for the boys, five for the girls, a huge dining hall. I mean, uh, they've got all kinds of, they have a huge uh, activity building, and, uh, a zip line, and uh, fishing. You know, we lost Caleb early on. He, as soon as we got there, we lost him. He was going fishing. So. <laughs> <laughs> he got a red shirt and went fishing. So. Um, but it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous place. If you ever get a chance, you have to stop up there. Uh, and see it. Uh, if you turn off 64 at Sand Black Church, go probably about three, four miles out, you'll see Greenbrier Christian Retreat. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. And they have a lot of property. A lot of property. God has blessed them with that. Uh, I'm sure they put up their own hay and, and sell that and use that money to put it back into camp. And uh, it's just a great investment for the church and, and how they're using that camp. And that God just continues to bless it. So I uh, hope that the kids, I'm sure they'll enjoy it this year and probably, hopefully they'll keep going back to that same camp this year or in the years to come. So uh, anyway, pray for them while they're gone. 
Uh, and then also junior campers, uh, their week is July 10th, so that's coming up here in a couple weeks. July 10th through July 14th, that'll be at Pleasant Island in Elkview. And if they have not registered or they need help with that, please let me know. Uh, and then tomorrow we have an activity with the moms and friends. Uh, they're going to do some blueberry picking. And uh, they'll be meeting here at the church at 9. And uh, they'll start uh, at the farm there in Rennick. And then uh, if you're going to go to the morning one, you want to also pack a picnic lunch as well. Uh, and then uh, after the lunch, they'll come back here to church about 2.30. Uh, have some devotions and a craft, and then they're going to go to a local blueberry farm, uh, Bob Pond Blueberry Farm. And the cost for the berries are about $2 a pound, uh, so just want to make, make you aware of that. And then also you would need to have your own containers to make sure you take those home. And if you have any questions, you can check with Aaron Sowers. And then uh, coming up here, uh, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday, we're going to observe the Lord's Supper after the evening service. Now, I want to let you know, I appreciate your faith, as Doug had mentioned in his prayer, uh, about how God has blessed our church uh, with young people. And, you know, I appreciate your faithfulness on a Wednesday night. Uh, Sunday night and Wednesday night is actually when, you, in the preaching, you get more meat. If you want to grow as a Christian, you're not going to grow being a Sunday morning only Christian. You're not going to get much because usually Sunday morning is a time, because that's when a lot of visitors come, there, it's more of a salvation emphasis. So you're going to get a lot of salvation, a lot of salvation. You'll get other things from the Bible, but it's mostly salvation emphasis. Sunday night and Wednesday night is a time, uh, I like Sunday night because that's our more of our family gathering. You know, testimony time, other things that we have. Wednesday night is a time that we can really get into the scriptures, you know, with Bible study. And of course you can get uh, some meat as well in Sunday school. But I appreciate your faithfulness. And one of the reasons we need to be faithful to God's house on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights as much as we can is because, one, that's the, that's the core of the church. But, two, uh, we need to build up in the faith. And we, the reason we need to build up in the faith is so we can get involved in church. We can get involved in, in children's ministries and uh, you know, teaching them or doing other things, helping these ministries to go on. And then also we can bring other people in, other families in. Uh, families reach families. That's the way it works. And uh, so we need, we want to always be a family-friendly church, uh, but we always want to be a church that's not focused on family, being family-friendly. We want to focus on the Word of God and what He has for us. And if we do that, we will be a family-friendly church. Uh, we will be the other things that we need to be. So anyway, I just want to tell you I appreciate your faithfulness on Wednesday night, and I pray that God will bless you for being here. But that's all the announcements I have, so let's all stand, let's welcome one another to our service, and then we'll prepare for our Wednesday night off.
97. Stand and sing. God will take care of you. 97. Sell him into slavery. 
But they took his coat that was off of him and they killed an animal and they spread the blood on the coat and told their father, they I'm sure tore the coat up a little bit, told their father that uh, some wild beast must have gotten by the way or at least made his father think that. And that's what Jacob had been thinking all of these years. And now we come to this time, this is roughly about 13 years later or so uh, when we get to this part of the story. And the heartache that he had gone through, I'm sure, was severe. And after living with that thought all the time, he had no idea what was going on in Egypt. None whatsoever. And here his sons come back this last time and say, hey, Joseph is yet alive. And of course, the Bible says his heart fainted. It just kind of melted. Like, why are you bringing up this, this hurt again? But when he saw the wagons coming, he knew that his son was alive. You know, sometimes in our own life, we're going to go through trials. Doug mentioned this in his prayer. The devil's fighting. We're going to have battles. We're going to have difficult times in our life. But what we need to see is the wagons coming. Yeah. So many times as Christians, as we go through these difficult moments, we think God maybe has forsaken. Sometimes we think the worst. We start doubting the goodness of God. But when you see the blessings come, when you see those wagons come, it changes everything. But what God wants us to do is He wants us to use our spiritual eyes and see the wagons coming before they ever get there. That's what He wants. This is a message more about gratitude and what we need to do with gratitude and how we need to get it and what God says uh, in his word about it. So we're going to pray and we'll get started here in the message. Father, we ask you to bless and I pray you guide and direct our time together now. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our gratitude, someone had said our gratitude to God or our lack of it reveals the place that God holds in our lives. How thankful are we to God? Do we just thank Him when we think of it, when there is a blessing? So often we'll pray for things and, and God will answer the prayers. And how many times do we forget to stop and thank God for the answer prayer? How many times do we forget to thank God before the answer ever comes? That's God's desire for our hearts. Our, my first point, these points are not alliterated, but they're just kind of basic, and we see it a little bit here in the story. First of all, we should always look for the blessings. Always look for the blessings. It is so easy to criticize and find problems, find fault. It is so easy to see the difficulties. And here's, here's the devil's, I think his number one tool in a Christian's life or anybody else's life is he always wants us to see the circumstances. When you're looking at the circumstances, your eyes aren't on Jesus. Yeah, amen. And just like Peter, when he got out of the boat and he walked on water, what a tremendous thing that was. But when he got his eyes on the circumstances, he saw all the waves boisterous. I mean, there's still a storm. He's going up and down with the waves. But as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was okay. When he got his eyes off, that's when he began to sink. We should always look for the blessings. After everything Jacob had been through, when he saw the wagons, he saw the blessings. But what God wants us to do is to see the blessings ahead of time through faith. The devil's going to work hard to blind us to the goodness of God. Many lives, marriages, and churches are falling apart across our country today. Why? Because we fail to see God's goodness. Marriages are falling apart. Why? Because you fail to see the goodness in your spouse. All you can see is what a pathetic loser they are. You know, how they've done this wrong and that wrong. But I'm here to tell you, they are a sinner. You don't have to look very hard to find problems. It's easy to do that. Anybody can do it. You can find problems with me. I can find problems with you. But it takes work and effort to look for the good. And that's what God wants. And you know what the amazing thing is? When we look for the good, 
in others, like our spouse or like maybe uh, people in the church or other people, maybe even our enemies. We try to look for the good in the situation. That's when our heart starts to change. That's when everything takes over. Why? Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I can't tell you the number of couples that I have counseled with and going through, and some of them married many, many years, going through difficult times, but can't get past this one point. Your thinking is all wrong. That's why, you, that's why you feel the way you do. That's why you think the way you do. It's all wrong. It's not scriptural. We must think on the good things. If it's lovely, pure, honest, just, if there's any virtue, any praise, whatever, think on these things God says. But we need to especially think about the goodness of God. And God is so good in his plan and his purpose. He has directed us to this, this specific place in our life. We need to make sure that we see God's goodness in everything because the devil doesn't want us to see it. The devil loves it when we see the burdens instead of the blessings. He loves it when we criticize instead of praise. He's especially good at this when we're going through the hurt in the immediate time. Take your Bibles and we'll be back here in just a second. I want you to see one more passage. And this is the only passage I'm going to have you turn to. I'm going to give you some other verses. You can jot those verses down here in just a minute. I just want to read them to you. But Romans chapter 2, I want you to see this. It is easy to criticize. It is hard to see the goodness and what God's doing while you're going through the problem. When you're going through the problem, it's easy to see what the problem is. That's not the difficult thing. The difficult thing is to see by faith what God is trying to do through the problem. And this is exactly what Paul addressed here to the church at Rome in Romans chapter 2. Because they were finding fault with one another. They were blaming one another, criticizing one another. Look what it says here in Romans 2 verse 1. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges. Now, let me say this about judging. A lot of people use Matthew uh, 7 where it says, Judge not lest you be judged, and they stop right there. There are times we are supposed to judge one another. But there's a way we're supposed to do it correctly. You must judge yourself first and allow God to judge you thoroughly. Then you can see clearly to judge your brother or sister because now you're going to judge them with much more compassion. That's the proper way to do it. But here, they, they were not doing this. They were not judging them correctly. They were doing it incorrectly. And he says, uh, Whosoever thou art that judges, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. In other words, he says, you're just as pathetic. You're criticizing them for this and for this and for this. And you're just as bad. You couldn't do it either is what he's trying to say. Look at verse 2. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, old man, that judgest them which do such things and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness, that's speaking of God's goodness, and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? You see, what he's saying here is the reason you might have that trial with a brother or sister in Christ, or you might have that trial in your marriage, or you might have that trial at work, the reason you might have that is because God is working behind the scenes and he's doing something good. That is to bring you to a place of repentance. In other words, a change of mind, a change of heart, and a change of action so that you can further grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what God wants you to see. But so often we don't because the devil blinds us to these things. Back at our story, Jacob's spirit was revived when he saw the wagons there in verse 27. When we look for the blessing. God is then free to do a work in our hearts. Now, let me give you some scripture for some of this. The first thing was we should always look for the blessings. Even in the difficulty. Even in the trial. Even in the trouble. Here's the second point. We should thank our God. Even 
in the trial. We should thank our God. Look at chapter 46, verse 1. It says that Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father Isaac. Now this is after he saw the wagons coming. He saw the blessings of God. He didn't necessarily do this in the midst of the trial, but he made sure that he did it. You see, most Christians don't do it in the trial, but oftentimes we forget to do it even after we see the blessing. We need to be a thankful people, a grateful people, and thank God for his blessings. What could have been, you know, here he is, Jacob's getting ready to, uh, he's getting ready to see Joseph for the first time in years. A son he thought was dead. What could be more important than seeing Joseph? Stopping and thanking God. That was more important. I tell you what, when you have a grateful heart, It'll change your life. Yeah. It'll change the lives of those around you too. Because God's changed you, it'll help you change others. Let me give you some verses here, what God says about thanksgiving. Psalm 105 and verse 1. You can just jot these verses down if you want. I'm just going to read them quickly. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Psalm 105, verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. This is what we do Sunday night when we have testimony time. Make known his deeds among the people. I want to thank God for answered prayer. I want to thank God for this and thank God for that. Make known his deeds among the people. Psalm 107 verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. All the time. For he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. If you can't thank God for anything else, you better thank God for his mercy. That you don't get what you deserve and I don't get what I deserve. Ephesians 5.20. Listen to this one very carefully. Giving thanks always. Now that's an absolute right there. There's not a time you're not supposed to give thanks. Giving thanks always for all things. That's tough. I'm not saying being grateful is easy. But this is what God's word says. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen to this next one. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 In everything while you're in it in every situation of life in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That thing you're going through that's God's will for your life. He either caused it or he allowed it to happen. He allowed maybe the devil to sift you as wheat like he did Peter. But remember what he told Peter? The devil has a desire to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Be thankful. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing. That means don't worry. Don't be anxious. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, another absolute, in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. That means before you see the wagons coming, before the blessings come, we ought to be thanking God anyway. Why? Because he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Because of what he's done in our hearts and our lives already. Because he has saved us if you're saved today. There's a lot of things we can thank God for. Most people don't stop and thank the Lord after he answers their prayer, let alone thanking him while they're praying in the midst of the trial. We need to see the wagons coming, spiritually speaking. And then my last point is this. We should obey the Lord. We should obey the Lord. When we obey God out of a grateful heart, this is when we really start to receive blessings. Just being obedient. Obeying the things God shows us. Obeying what he says in his word. Obeying uh, being grateful in the midst of difficulties. When we obey that and we see what God does in our life, the blessings just start to come and they start being poured upon us. He opens the windows of heaven and he'll pour us out a blessing that there won't be room enough to receive it. And yes, I know that's specifically dealing with tithing, but that goes with a lot of other things as well. God wants to bless his children. 
I want to be blessed. If you want to be blessed, we must be willing by faith to see the wagons coming before they actually come. And whatever God tells us to do, just do it. You don't have to understand the whys and the wherefores. There's a lot of things when I feel God impresses upon my heart, maybe something that we need to do in the church. There's a lot of things I'm asking God like, well, I don't understand. How's this going to happen? How's that going to happen? We sometimes just need to step out by faith and just see you know, what it says there uh, when he told the children of Israel when they were standing at the Red Sea, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Just stand there. Just do what I'm telling you to do and see what I'm about to do. See what my mighty hand is going to do. Jacob received many blessings because of his obedience to go into Egypt. He received courage. If you look in verse 3, and he said, this is God speaking, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt. So he right there received courage. He didn't have to fear anything. He received assurance. In verse 3, God renewed his promise to make him a great nation. Jacob also received direction. How many times have we prayed for direction in our life? Like, Lord, I don't know if I should do this. I don't know if I should do that. I don't know if I should buy that car or buy this thing or, or go there or do this. Whatever it is. We need direction in our life. And God wants to direct us. That's part of the blessings of obedience. Jacob also received confidence. Not only was he told to go to Egypt, that was his direction, but he had confidence. It says there in verse 4, God says, I will go down with thee into Egypt. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, when you know God is by your side, and I'm not talking about you know God is by your side up here. I'm talking about when you know it right here. You know God is by your side. There is nothing that you as a child of God can't face that you can't have some confidence in. Like, Lord, <laughs> I know I can't do this, but you can do it. And you can help. If you, this is where you are directing me, then I know you're going to give me the strength and the ability to get done what you want me to get done. We can have that confidence, and that only comes from obedience. Our gratitude to God should bring about our obedience to God. And obedience to God is not simply doing His will. This is what a lot of people misunderstand. Obeying God is not just simply doing His will at you know, grudgingly or of necessity, as the Bible talks about giving or other things that we do. Sometimes we just we grumble and complain. What the children of Israel do in the wilderness? They still went where God led them, but what they do all the way? Grumble and complain. That's what we tend to do too. We grunt, okay, Lord, I'll obey, but you're going to know I don't like it. We're like a nagging wife sometimes. Just when we keep complaining, keep complaining, keep complaining. But you know what? I'm glad God's ear never gets heavy. Amen. Sometimes he'll have to deal with our nagging and our complaining, like he did the children of Israel. But our obedience to God is not simply doing his will. Obedience to God is delighting in doing his will. It is taking pleasure in doing his will. I'm so thankful I get to do what I'm doing. I get to preach the gospel. But you know what? Sometimes we get weary and well doing. There's times I get so tired my brain won't operate and I'm trying to study and prepare for a message and I'm praying and begging God, Lord, you're going to have to give me something to give these people. I don't know what you want them to have. Some people think preachers just go through and start pulling stuff out of the Bible. If that's what you have in a preacher, you probably need to find another preacher. Because <laughs> it doesn't work that way. There is a specific message for a specific hour. And you know, we started this study. This is an amazing thing. This is how God works. We started this study. I prayed about this, and I felt God leading us to this study on Wednesday night to go through the life of Joseph. And you know what's crazy? We had to take some time off. Last week I wasn't planning to be gone, but we were gone. And then we had cold wars. And there were some other things that kind of delayed it. But it brought us to this specific time right now. And God brought you here for this specific time right now so you can hear this exact message. That's how God works. Otherwise you'd have missed it. That's why it's important to get everything you can. Get in every service you can because sometimes... The very message you need to hear is the one that was preached when you weren't here. God knew it ahead of time. I didn't know it, but God knew it. 
That's called the foolishness of preaching, and that's what God does. But as we simply obey God, and we delight in doing His will, and, and it's just a joy. You, if you get to teach a Sunday school class, praise God for that. If you get to help doing anything in the church, if you get to sweep the floors, praise God for that. It's just a joy to work in God's house. If you get to greet people at the door, praise the Lord for that. Whatever it is, maybe you just can't do the things you used to do. But boy, you can be a prayer warrior. I tell you what, those are some of the most important people in the church. And I'm not just saying that. I'm telling you the truth. That is the strength and lifeline of the church. That's something we all ought to be a part of. But Jacob's gratitude began when he saw the wagon. When he saw those wagons with his physical eyes, that's when his gratitude began. But our gratitude ought to begin when we see those wagons. We see them coming before they're ever there. Our hearts might be heavy. Our, our burden might be great. And we pray and we cast all of our care upon God. But by faith, we see those wagons coming. That's what God wants us to do. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made unto God. Let's all stand and we'll have a word of prayer. Our Father, we thank you so much for the scriptures. Thank you for the great truths that we find. And Lord, I think this is one thing that we all probably need to work on them just a little bit more. Is having a gratitude attitude. Lord, help us to see the good in other situations, in every situation. See what your hand might be trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish in our lives. Help us, Lord. And sometimes, Lord, our faith is weak. But when our faith is weak, Lord, we know that's when you are strong. I pray that we might get our faith increased. And you tell us how to get our faith increased. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more we hear your word, the more we are in your word, the stronger our faith will be. Dear God, I pray. I know we have some hurting hearts here tonight. I pray for those who have surgeries coming up. I think of Roger, uh, his surgery in Bali and what they're going through. And Lord, I think of Robbie and his surgery coming up and Don Edwards. And Lord, some surgeries... Uh, every surgery is serious, some more serious than others, but everyone is serious. Yeah. And Lord, I just pray that whether it's even surgery, there might be some other burden. It might be a financial trouble or trial, or it could be a, a, a family thing, or it could be something uh, at our job, or whatever it might be, Lord, that we're going through. I pray that, Lord, by faith, we'll see those wagons coming. Yeah. Right. Father, show your mighty hand to work in our lives. We ask these things. And bless this invitation time now. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 252. As we sing a song of invitation 252, God spoke to your heart. Won't you come? Maybe you just need to cast your word here at the altar for the Lord.
will save you, he will save you now. Salvation is just not about saving your soul. It's about saving you from the power of sin as well. He will say, you have to trust him. Only trust him. And it seems so simple. But sometimes it's difficult to do because sometimes our faith is weak. But God will help you. He'll help you. We're going to close here to a word of prayer. Appreciate your faithfulness. I'm going to ask C.A. if you mind dismissing a prayer for please. Thank you, Lord, for the service you have. Thank you, Lord, for breaking the bread of life. Give us, Lord, and give us strength to help us, Lord, to be more like you every day. Thank you, God, for loving us, saving us, and forgiving us. Thank you for the whole thing that you promised us, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.